we're continuing to work with formulas, and now we'll use the formula for simple interest, calculating the total amount in an account, either an investment account, or it could be a loan, it equals the principal, which is our original amount invested, or the original amount of the loan, added to this product right here, multiplying the principal times the interest rate times the time as a number of years. We know with formulas, they're often solved for a variable. In this case, the formula is solved for A, the total amount. The formula is set up for us to substitute numbers for P, R, and T to calculate A. For example, if we're investing $1,000, we can substitute 1,000 in place of P. Let's also assume that our interest rate is 3%. In the formula, we want it to be a decimal, 0 0.03. Lastly, we'll make this a five-year investment, so T equals five. So we've substituted values into all the variables on the right side of this formula. We'll do order of operations to find the value of A. First, we'll multiply 1,000 times 0 0.03 times 5. Just multiplying 1,000 times 0 0.03 gives us the amount of the interest. $1,000 times 3% equals $30, but that is for each year, and we have a total of 5 years. So this multiplication will give us a total of $150. $30 for each year times 5 for the 5 years, a total of $150 in interest. Now we'll add that back into our original principal, 1,000, and we can see that A equals $1,150. We can also take a formula and investigate the relationship between two of the variables by fixing all the rest. Let's choose principal to stay at $1,000, and let's keep the interest rate at 3% as a decimal 0 0.03. We'll substitute these values into the formula keeping t as a variable. There's a little bit of simplifying we can do, multiply the 1,000 times 0 0.03. And now we have a relationship between the final amount and the time of the investment, assuming that the principal is 1,000 and the interest rate is 3%. We can choose various values for t and evaluate to see how it changes a. For these various values of t, will one at a time substitute that number in place of t in this formula and do order of operations to calculate a. If t equals 1, here's what our formula looks like. We'll multiply 30 times 1 and then add to 1,000 to have our final amount $1,030. If t equals 2, 30 times 2 equals 60, added to 1,000 equals $1,060. And we can continue to do this for each of the values of t. We'll see that result 1,150 when we substitute 5 in place of t, a 5-year investment. And if we wanted to investigate a different relationship, like the relationship between total amount and interest rate, we would fix the variables per and time. And let's change the problem up a little bit this time. Let's make the principal $3,500 and we're going to fix also time. Let's assume we're talking about a 10-year investment. Time equals 10. Let's substitute these values into the formula and simplify the equation. Looking at the 3,500 times r times 10, we can simplify by multiplying the 3,500 times 10 and leaving the r behind. Because these three are all being multiplied together, and multiplication is an operation that we can do in any order, we can multiply those number parts and leave the R behind. Now here's our simplified formula for a principal of $3,500 and a 10-year investment. Let's pick a few interest rates to see how they affect the total amount. Starting with an interest rate of 1%, we're substituting this value in place of R in the formula and using order of operations to calculate an answer. When R equals 0 0.01, 35,000 times 0 0.01 equals $350, added to this 3,500 gives our final total amount $3,850. When the interest rate is 2%, 0 0.02 times 35,000 equals $700. 700 plus $3,500 equals $4,200. For a 3% interest rate, 35,000 times 0.03 equals $1,050, 
added to $3,500 equals $4,550. We see a direct relationship between interest rate and amount that as the interest rate increases, so does the final amount. We saw a direct relationship with time also. As time increased, the final amount increased as well. Let's fill out the amount for a 4% interest rate just to close up this table. It would be $4,900. Now again, this formula is solved for A. It's very useful for substituting a value of rate to calculate the final amount. But what if we wanted to do the opposite? What if we wanted to figure out a rate to get a specific final amount? For example, what if we knew we wanted to end up with exactly $4,000 in this account? What would the interest rate be to get there? First look at our table of results so far. Definitely as the interest rate increases, so does the total amount. And trying to see where $4,000 would fit in as a final amount, it would be right in here as we see these values increasing. So between 3,850 and 4,200. So that's a good clue that our interest rate is going to be somewhere in here between 1% and 2%. Now we could start taking some guesses of interest rates, 1.5%, 1.6%, 1.2%, and so on. But instead of just relying on trial and error, we have a specific process we can use for solving problems like this. Since we want to come up with a value for r, we can solve this formula for r. So instead of solved for a, which is useful for calculating a, we're going to solve for r to be able to calculate r. To get a better sense of what it is that we're trying to accomplish when we solve for r, let's write out what steps we currently do to calculate a for these times when we knew what the interest rate was. So for example, what did we do when we decided to use a 2% interest rate? How did we calculate the total amount? Definitely we substituted that interest rate in place of R in this formula and then did the order of operations. But let's actually write those out. First, we took our interest rate and multiplied by 35,000. Once we multiplied by 35,000, we added that into 3,500. And that's how we calculated the value of A. So if we're going to decide that we'll start with a value for A, like we want to have an amount exactly equal to $4,000, we can undo each of these steps to get us back to what value of R, what interest rate that must have been. So we know that if we start with R, multiply by 35,000, and then add 3,500, exactly what we see going on on this right side of the formula. That's how we calculate A. So if we start with A, like 4,000, we'll undo each of these steps, and we'll get back to the interest rate R. So let's do that. To undo adding $3,500, we want to do the opposite, the opposite of add, subtract. So let's take the $4,000, and let's undo the last step undo it by taking away 3500 leaves us with $500. Now we have to undo the first thing we did, multiplying by 35,000. The opposite of multiply is divide. So now let's take 500 and divide by 35,000. And we get approximately 0 0.0143, or about 1.43%. Definitely a value that was right in between 1 and 2%, to give us a total amount of 4,000 right in between these two values. And we use the opposite operations that we did to find amount. So if we know rate, multiply by 35,000 and add 3,500 to equal the amount. But if we're starting with the amount, we undo these steps, subtract $3,500 and then divide by $35,000. Lastly, this equation, which is solved for A, was useful for substituting the rate in place of R, multiplying by 35,000, add 3,500 to calculate A, the total amount. And now that we've seen questions that ask us to find R, it would be useful to have a formula that is solved for R. And we will use these exact steps to find how we set up a formula that is solved for R. We know that these are the steps to calculate from R to A and we were doing the opposite operations 
to get from A to R. So we can say that you can find R by doing these opposite operations. Opposite of adding 3500, we will take A and subtract 3500, and then undoing multiply by 35,000, the opposite divide by 35,000. And here's how we can write a formula that is solved for R. If you want, you can do a quick check to show that if we put 4,000 in place of A, we'll see that 1.4, approximately 1.43 percent interest rate. All we've done is create a formula that shows exactly those undoing steps, and it is the formula that is solved for R. Let's hit this example a couple more times to get it feeling a little smoother. First, let's handle the question, what's the total amount when $1,750 is invested at 3.3% for five years? Well, we're trying to find the total amount, and the formula that we have right now is solved for A. So this is the type of problem where we're ready to substitute our values into the formula, use order of operations to calculate A. Here's our formula with all those values substituted in. Now we'll multiply these three and then add to 1,750. Be cautious about our interest rate that we use the decimal form. So 3.3% written as 0 0.033. And we can calculate that A equals $2,038 and 75 cents. But what about this question? For how long should $1,750 be invested at 3.3% to get a total amount of $2,500? This time we're not trying to figure out the total amount A. We know that it's $2,500. Instead we're interested in how long will this take? We're trying to find the variable T. We can still start by substituting these amounts into the variables in our formula. A is $2,500. We have the principal, $1,750. And the interest rate, again it's a decimal, 0 .033 times time. We'll have to leave it as the variable t because right now it's unknown. Let's do what we can to simplify this formula. Multiply 1,750 by 0 .033 and that takes us to 57.75 t. So the formula is not solved for t because the t is not isolated. It's not all alone on its side of the equation. But we can still figure out what t is by looking at the operations that are being done, and it's still helpful for me to write down the steps of what operations are occurring. So to the variable t, first multiply by 57.75. Once we multiply by 57.75, we're adding it to 1,750. And adding in 1,750 gives us our final total amount, $2,500. So we'll do the opposite of these steps, and we'll do it in the opposite order. We're going to one by one undo each of these steps. So going to our total amount, $2,500, let's undo this step. Instead of adding, we will subtract 1,750. And that will leave us with $750. And now let's undo this step. Instead of multiply by 57.75, we will divide by 57.75. And it equals approximately 13 years, just a little bit less. I see on my calculator about 12.987. So I'll round it up to 13 years. So this is one very useful approach for when we get to problems of this type. When we have a formula, an equation, but the variable that we're trying to find is not isolated. The formula is not solved for t. So we look closely at what operations are going on to the variable t, multiply by 57.75, and then adding in 1,750. If we undo each of those steps, we can find t. So from the result of that expression, we subtracted 1,750, and then we divided by 57.75, and that ended up giving us that variable t. And just like we did with the last example, we can write a formula that is solved for t. We know the steps would be take your final amount, subtract 1,750, and divide by 57.75. And now we have a formula that is solved for t. 
it shows exactly the steps that we were doing to undo the multiply and the add. Subtract and then divide. And if we try it out with this problem, take an amount $2,500 in place of this A, and now evaluate this expression. The subtraction in the numerator 2,500 minus 1,750 equals 750, then 750 divided by 57.75, and we get the same answer we did earlier. T is approximately 13 years. I even see the same 12.987, etc. in my calculator. So as long as we're careful about spotting what operations are going on in the formula to begin with, multiply and then add, we can solve for t by setting up an expression that does those opposite operations. So here's one for you to try. What interest rate is needed for a 15-year investment of $500 to reach $1,250? We're not looking for amount, we're looking for interest rate, but let's still start by substituting our known information into this formula. The final amount, 1250 equals the principal, $500, plus this expression P times R times T. Principal, $500, times the interest rate, we don't know what that is, times the time, we know 15-year investment. Let's simplify the formula, multiply 500 times 15, and we cannot simplify further. We can't add 500 plus 7,500 R, because this term has a variable r, this term is just a number, a constant, and we are not able to add up terms where one is a constant and the other has a variable. So this is as much as we can do to simplify the right side of the formula. Now let's go through our steps to figure out what is r. We can look at this formula and identify what operations are currently happening with r. First, we multiply by 7,500, and then we add 500. That would achieve our total amount of $1,250. So to find R, let's undo each of these steps, starting with the $1,250 result. Instead of add, let's subtract. 1,250 take away 500, leaves us with $750. Then undo multiplying by 7,500 and divide by 7,500. And we get the decimal answer, 0.1. That's our rate, but can we turn this into a percent? Moving it two decimal places, this means an interest rate of 10%. And finally, since we were solving for r, let's find the formula that is solved for r. Right here, we can see that r is multiplied by 7,500, and then add 500. Here we see those opposite steps that we were doing. So let's set up from the final amount we would subtract $500. We see we did that first right here. And after that, we divided by $7,500. See that right there. It was the opposite of multiplying by 7,500 and adding 500. And this is the formula that finds R. It is solved for R.